कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, PM sets record straight. FDB nets green climate project funding. And no more EIAs for surveyed areas. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spate. The Ministry of Ethel K Affairs has given 66 yacht permits to enter Fiji waters since the Blue Lane initiative began in June. This was confirmed by Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama during a talk show in Ananda Prime Minister on Radio Fiji 1 after some maritime communities banned these yachts from entering their fishing grounds. As Sainyan Mboila reports, Mbaini Marama has assured these yachts are safe as they were cleared by relevant authorities. No longer will you have to wait until... Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama has cleared the air regarding the movement of overseas yachts in our waters, saying all protocols have been followed under the Blue Lane Initiative. Before the permit was given by the ETOK Affairs, the Customs and the Ministry of Health works on the clearance and the OK of these yachts. For once they are given the permit, they will then be able to sail across our waters and our fishing ground and no one can stop them. Baini Marama says yachts are only allowed to enter rural communities if they are given the permit from the Itoke Affairs Ministry. For people living in the rural and maritime communities, I want to confirm that all yachts seen around your waters have their permits and they have all undergone the relevant COVID-19 check protocols. Minister for Health Dr. Iferemi Wangenembethi says there is a multi-government agency committee that looks after vessels and yachts that enters our waters and ensures that they are COVID-19 safe before being issued a permit. The applications and make sure that they are vetted including the COVID safe requirements that are needed uh, and that is all understood. Uh, as you also aware that uh, these vessels um, have uh, indications by which uh, uh, readers can, uh, reader system can be able to identify when they're, uh, you know, when they've left wherever they're coming from and heading into Fiji. The government, together with the health ministry, is working to ensure that we contain the spread of the disease at the same time revitalize our economy. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Nearly 10,000 residents of Ovalau are 100% dependent on diesel generators. However, soon this will cut by more than half, bringing dependence on diesel generators down to 57%. This is the Green Climate Fund has granted U.S. $5 million to the Korea International Cooperation Agency to carry out the agrophotovoltaic program in Ovalau. This program combines solar power generation with agriculture as part of the government's drive to fight climate change and to switch fully to renewable power sources by 2035. Kritika Kumar reports. The project consists of two stages, building and managing solar power plants on Ovalau and providing technical support for steps to strengthen agricultural productivity at the plant site. The Fiji APV project is a history maker in more ways than one. It is the first ever FDB GCF project the first ever APV project approved by GCF, the first ever mitigation-centric GCF project for Fiji. The GCF-approved funds will be used for the first stage of the program, which is monitored by the Fiji Development Bank. The Green Climate Fund is the single largest source of multilateral climate finance in the world, with a total funding capacity of over US $10.3 billion. The new FDB board chair highlighted that the project will also provide a more reliable source of electricity and improve Fiji's agricultural capacity. This investment is a paradigm shift to low emission and clean energy, but also to climate resilient agriculture. This project holds special importance for women and young people who have the chance to learn new farming techniques, creating jobs in the agriculture sector at a time when we badly need those jobs. Kritika Kumar, FBC News.
The Ministry of Environment will be engaging consultants and experts to compile baseline data to help clients save money and provide the ministry with critical information. The availability of baseline data will mean companies and clients won't have to conduct environment impact assessment on areas already surveyed. Karoi Tandalala reports that clients will instead have to develop an environment management plan. The Ministry of Environment says having baseline data will also assist them fast track the application process. Second thing that we, that we want to do is to engage consultants, experts to give us the baseline data. So once we do that, that means we are investing money upfront to develop a baseline data, which will ensure that the others that don't have to come in now, the clients don't have to spend that money to develop baseline data for EIA for us. The ministry says the baseline data also includes survey for gravel extraction and logging. We already have baseline data due to extensive EIA um, reports that we have got over, over, over so many decades. Based on the screening application, the department will look at its own database and also the person who is making an application can submit those baseline data. The department can say that for these waterways, we don't need an EA, develop an EMP and submit to us. It's constant um, seeking for excellence in service delivery, at the same time balancing it with the environmental outcomes. That is a struggle and I know... The Ministry will conduct a periodic inspection for projects approved through Environment Management Plan to ensure its protection. This will be rolled out from October 1st. Kore Tandulala, FBC News. The Accident Compensation Commission has for over the past two years paid out almost $14 million to victims and families of motor vehicle, employment and school accidents. Chief Executive Pravez Akbar says the government no-fault compensation scheme came into effect in 2018 and the initiative continues despite our economic difficulties. Kelly Vavala reports. <laughs> Since Fiji's first COVID-19 case in March, the ACCF has so far paid out $5.7 million in compensation. Most of the payments have been for motor vehicle yeah. accidents. The, the, of, of the official death toll uh, for this year is about 20, and that's compared to, say, uh, 32 you see there So uh, last year, this time last year. So we are doing better, and, and some of that is probably because of the, the lockdowns that we've had and so on. Chief Executive Akbar also revealed the number of applications received as of today. For employment accidents, for example, uh, we've received 743 applications for injuries, 553 for death, um, and for school accidents, um, 124 for injury, and there's two applications for death as well. Meanwhile, the Commission is continuing with its awareness campaign. If you have uh, queries or questions regarding how to apply or where to go to, uh, for the application form you can get it from any LTA office uh, around Fiji near you. And uh, you, can, you can also uh, message us on Facebook. We're very active on Facebook. Notwithstanding the challenges of the current environment, the ACCF team continues to work hard to ensure victims of accidents and their families receive compensation in a timely manner. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Fijians are being urged to clean up their surroundings following the rise in dengue fever and leptospirosis cases. There have been over 4,000 reported cases of the two illnesses, with 14 deaths to date. Health Minister Dr. Feremi Wangai Nambete says health officials are working closely with district officers, community workers and government agencies to ensure their surroundings are clean. A majority of the cases are from Suva, Namosi, Rewa and Tailevu. Around what needs to be done at a home level uh, in terms of, uh, you know, keeping our environment clean, making sure that the brains are not blocked, also making sure that all crucibles that may hold water are being overturned, and also making sure that we have, you know, adequate sanitation. Up ahead, preacher worries too many Methodists jailed, and more humanitarian supplies for Fiji and neighbouring countries. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dhadkan.
The Methodist Church in Fiji is concerned with the increasing number of its members who are incarcerated. Statistics last year reveal that 685 church members were serving time in correction facilities, compared to 654 in 2018. The Fiji Correction Service statistics reveal that convicted members of the church are involved in major crimes such as rape, aggravated robbery and illicit drugs. President Reverend Dr. Epineri Vakandewavosa says they continue to work with the Correction Service to assist those members who have completed their terms. We are drawing plans together on how we can uh, help, the, help uh, the correctional services uh, with regards to all people inside the inmates and we have drawn plans of well, when someone finishes from there and the church will continue receiving and uh, see that uh, the, the, the person or the people are, uh, you know, are being settled well in their very own situation and encouraged to move on. Alcohol consumption and being drunk and disorderly seem to be major factors in curfew violations. Three men from Rewanga Suva were arrested over the weekend after allegedly throwing beer bottles at a police vehicle and officers. They were among 23 individuals arrested for breaching curfew in the last 48 hours, most of them drunk. On Saturday, 12 drunkards were arrested in the Southern Division, while the 38-year-old man who was found drunk in Arere Nasinu and a 48-year-old man was found loitering along Ratumara Road in Nambua. In the West, three individuals were arrested after being found drunk, while a 48-year-old man was arrested for alleged involvement in an attempted break-in in Tavua. In the Eastern Division, six drunkards, including three men in their 20s from the nearby villages, were found loitering and drunk along the railway bridge in Nausori. A chartered Nauruan Airlines flight today delivered essential medical supplies to Fiji, such as protective personnel equipment supplied through the Pacific Humanitarian Pathway on COVID-19. After delivering the crucial supplies today, the plane departed to distribute medical equipment to other Pacific islands. Details with Philippe Naikaso. The supplies, including protective masks, suits and gloves, thermometers and ventilators, continue to be vital in the fight against COVID-19. The flight today is carrying cargo, 6.7 metric tonnes of medical equipment and supplies um, for Fiji, Kiribati and Nauru. Personal protective equipment is coming in on this flight for Fiji and this is for the protection of health workers. The delivery of critical supplies was part of the U.S. government's $5 million support to the World Food Program's logistics operations in the Pacific, a response to COVID-19, another humanitarian crisis in Fiji and throughout the Pacific. Uh, Fiji's been part of that, and we've also, so besides the ventilators, we've also helped contribute towards GeneX cartridges uh, to test for COVID, as well as PPE. The provision of personal protective equipment and medical supplies is only one part of our support to Fiji and to the Pacific. It was again stressed the important role Fiji plays as the hub of the Pacific Island nations during times of crisis. It's absolutely critical. This is essential supplies for children to keep children alive. Not just to, to keep people safe from COVID, but to ensure that essential services, critical services, can happen in health centers and in health uh, in hospitals throughout the Pacific. More flights are scheduled to bring in medical supplies to Fiji and other island countries as the fight against COVID-19 continues. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Looking over to New Zealand, the New Zealand Prime Minister has labelled 2020 as simply terrible. But she has asked her people to stay calm and be strong as Aucklanders prepare for an extra four days in lockdown. Details from News Hub. At 101 cases in total, the Auckland cluster is now officially New Zealand's biggest. And the Prime Minister says it will have a long tail. But we can manage that. And part of managing that is to keep things as they are for just a few more days. Auckland will stay in level three until 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. These extra four days are believed necessary to allow us to move down a level in Auckland and stay down. The move to level two will be gradual. Schools, retail and socially distanced hospitality can come back. But mass gatherings will be limited to groups of 10 until at least the 6th of September. There is no denying 
that the price Aucklanders are currently paying is the greatest. The rest of the country will stay in level two, even though there's been no cases outside of Auckland. And it does make sense, except for one issue, and that is regional travel. There are many people and businesses who will want to enter and leave Auckland once it is at level two. Two hours before the announcement, the Director General of Health was keeping his best poker face. Kia ora koutoua. But admitted one of our eight new cases of community transmission was giving him some pause for thought. One of these had contact with another confirmed case. Uh, on a bus. They're now the third person to catch COVID-19 on a bus and the Director General expects there will be more. And because of that, from Monday, masks and other face coverings will be mandatory. Cabinet has decided to move to mandating the wearing of face coverings on public transport for level two and above. Earlier this morning, modelling expert Professor Sean Hendy told the AM show more time in level three would stamp out any undetected community transmission. And that's our concern. You know, that's really what we're waiting to see, and that's why we want to see those um, see those low numbers uh, for the next week, Cup combined with a reasonable level of testing, um, to be sure that that there's really not something that's going to um, jump out and surprise us. The Prime Minister acknowledging the toll the second wave is taking. If it feels hard right now, it's because it is. But let's also remember, in a world where 2020 has frankly been terrible, we are strong. We have been kind and we are doing really well. And Croy joins us now with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up. Resort benefits from Love Your Locals campaign. And former chef opens own food store. Stay with us. Radio Fiji One, Locals are taking advantage of the Shangri La Resorts Beach Beats and Eats event, noting an influx in bookings. Business from the resort is picking up under the Love Your Locals campaign. However, the safety of resort workers and guests remains paramount. Josiah Nanunga has more. This COVID-19 screening protocol is a must for workers and guests when checking in, reporting to their rooms or when visiting high-touch point areas at the resort. And so what we've done really is we've looked at every stage of the guest experience and we've tried to safeguard that um, without impacting the seamless service delivery that we're famous for at Shangri-La. So as soon as you come across the causeway, we're checking temperatures, your room is prepared and completely sanitised. Housekeeping service manager Ilitia Matanranra says staff are reminded at all times to comply with the protocols in place. He adds housekeeping attendants are only allowed to clean rooms six hours after the guests have checked out. All the items with uh, amenities, the linen, and also the toiletries and so forth, the amenities, it's all been taken out. Because when the, the ladies come in to service the room, they bring a new set of amenities, a new set of linen to be serviced the room so that it's ready for the next guest to come in. So. The resort has been receiving overwhelming response from locals. Over 200 locals took advantage of the package last weekend, filling up over 100 rooms at the resort. Chosai Nanunga, FBC News. Turning overseas, the coronavirus pandemic is upending the way U.S. consumers shop, so American retailers are changing the way they go at sales, rolling out their holiday shopping season early. It may be a holiday shopping season like no other. Some big retailers like Target, Best Buy, Kohl's and Walmart plan to skip Black Friday altogether. They can't afford to hold door-busting sales events when social distancing is the norm. Instead, they'll offer winter promotions as early as Halloween. Analysts say that could bring back shoppers. This week, some of the majors said back to school season, the second busiest time of year for the industry, has been slow and choppy. Add to that this concern, the expiration of the $600 weekly unemployment benefit in July could weaken consumer spending. 
Kohl's hopes to entice consumers by emphasizing comfortable clothing, home essentials, and toys for kids, categories that prove popular with online shoppers. With much of America still staying at home, e-commerce is expected to rise to a record 15% of all U.S. sales this year, according to eMarketer. Delivery companies, including the U.S. Postal Service, are responding with hefty holiday surcharges. Sunitha from HFC Bank joins us with the latest from the money market. The South Pacific Stock Exchange was active last week and recorded 28 transactions of seven listed entities. More than 50,000 shares changed hands with a value of $56,285. Including price changes, the total market value for last week fell by 2.06% to $3.44 billion. On the foreign exchange front, sentiment for the U.S. dollar has improved due to supporting data on the business activity and home sales. There are still concerns that additional monetary easing may be necessary to keep their economic growth on track. Investors will also be watching out for a further run of data this week for clues about the global economy, including a second estimate of U.S. GDP for the second quarter, as well as weekly jobless claims and some second-tier Asian indicators. Also expected this week is New Zealand's balance of trade data for July. That's all from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Looking at today's local exchange rates as set this morning, it was a mixed day on the world's money markets. The Fiji dollar dropped against the Chinese yuan and the U.S. greenback, as well as the Kiwi and the yen, but gained on the Aussie dollar, the PNG Kina and the euro. And taking a look at the commodities, crude oil prices remain just above $42 per barrel, Gold fell by about $10 to close at $1,934 per ounce and silver closed down at $26.53 an ounce. In growing Fiji tonight, many Fijians are not letting the economic effects the pandemic stop them from pursuing other projects as they struggle to make ends meet. Fijians are now investing their savings to enter the world of business. Sefanaya Rayawa used to work at one of the prominent cafes in Suva and lost his job due to the pandemic. However, Rayawa did not lose hope and used his experience to invest over $1,600 in a restaurant business. The Syria Grill and Barrister food stall based in Osori has become a hit among the locals. He's the, um, the brains behind the... Uh What's behind me here uh, with the Syria Grill is the one who's uh, putting up, uh, uh, brewing up all the spices and everything for for the taste. And uh, and um, the idea came uh, after he left his work uh, due to the COVID-19 situation. And that's it from Business Tonight. Jamie joins you now with the latest in sports. Thanks, Koroi, and good evening ahead in sports. For Mombati, back as national coach. And Suva crowned Kings of Futsal. This and more coming up. My name is Neha and I'm from Karabi. And Mitch FM, it's hot. Mitch FM, it's hot. Brandon Costan has stepped down as Fiji Mbati head coach effective immediately, citing family reasons. Costan's final day as head coach will be on Wednesday. However, today the Fiji National Rugby League appointed former Mbati and one of the pioneers of the sport in Fiji as his replacement. Aquila Dama with the story. He was there at the 2008 Rugby League World Cup as the Mbati head coach and now he will lead the team again to next year's event. I would like to acknowledge the, the board members of the Rugby League for believing in me <coughs> and give me this opportunity to coach again the Fiji National Rugby League team in the World Cup. The FNRL board is proud to appoint a local for the top job. Joe has the full backing of uh, the board. Uh, we wish him well. We're so proud that we can appoint just the local coach. Uh, he, he has a level three uh, certificate, the highest in uh, rugby league, uh, the only one in Fiji. 
Rambele was one of the first players to play rugby league in 1992 and he's taking the coaching job, not for the money. When I, I broke the news to Joe uh, that uh, we want him to coach, coach the Fiji, but his first comment to me was, uh, uh, don't worry about the pay, I'm happy to do the job. But uh, definitely we're going to worry about the pay and we're going to make sure that he's remunerated properly. The new coach has a plan in place, but first he has to consult his coaching team. Uh, first I want to do is try to sit down with all the coaching staff, have a meeting with them, see, set a plan for, for our preparation, especially for this year, and to prepare a team for this year till uh, the World Cup come, come next year, 2021. Rambele will be assisted by Kaviti Silktail's coach Wes Naingama for the World Cup in England next year. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Super Rugby wouldn't mind another shot at the Fairbrother Trophy this year. Despite losing the first challenge of the season to Nanronga, Suva may get another shot if Nomosi holds on to the trophy until the last round of matches. However, the focus for the capital city side remains fixed on defending the Skipper Cup. Karolaini Tavi has more. The win against Naita Siri over the weekend has laid a platform for Suva to finish on top again this year. Um, I think the fitness is taking toll on the, the Suva boys. Uh, we're building on from the last two games. And um, I think this is another platform to uh, go on, on to the next few games that we have. Suva is hoping for a chance at the Fairbrother Sullivan Trophy. Uh, especially we're focusing on the Skipper Cup uh, competition. Uh, but to be able to play for another Fairbrother game will be a bonus to us. It is back to the drawing board for the Maroons as they prepare for the match against Suva. As, as I said, we will uh, be improving on all our processes, the discipline part of the game. Uh, they will, uh, what are we looking at? Lotoka hosts Suva at Churchill Park on Saturday. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. The Naita Siri rugby side will need to get its combinations right for this week's uh, Skipper Cup match against Tailevu. After suffering their second loss in the competition to Suva last week, the Highlanders will be out to remain in contention for top honours. With veteran players like Kini Douglas, Sireli Kalodava and Joeli Vetayaki in the mix for the young Naita Siri side, head coach Eli Tietuise Se says they are still trying to find their best combinations of players. We have players who have played in, came through their, our system, like the Latu and Brua in the fly. For us, we look at our back line, we are, we're still trying to find, a, find our fit, fit there and try to get the combination fixed. So right now, hopefully by now, we can put in players who can take us forward from now. Tactical moves in the final of the Vodafone Futsal Inter District Championship paid off for Suva. After defeating Lamy 2-1 in pool play, Suva beat them again 3-2 in the final to successfully defend their title. Aquila Dama has more. It's a two-in-a-row win for Suva after claiming the 2019 Futsal IDC title following their win in 2018. And last night, they did it with their specialist players. We are not district players. Uh, you can see other teams like Reva and Nandi. I mean, they came with the district players, but we managed to defend our title well with some young boys here. After beating Lamy in pool play, Suva had to change a few things around in the final. We basically... Uh, uh, so what uh, players they were substituting and we tried to capitalize on them uh, because uh, the five players they were bringing in was getting tired very quickly so we managed to uh, use our subs well in that area. And then Lamy was gracious in defeat and acknowledged that Suva is the best in the business. We have to compare them like Fiji 7's team. Eh? Uh, they are well drilled. We can't teach them. Eh? They know everything. Eh? Apart from this team, if you look at Lemi or any other team, we are probably babies. We are still learning. So I know, yeah, we played with the kings. Eh? Fiji Sevens is the kings and Suva is the king of futsal at the moment. Suva won $3,500 while Lamy walked away with $1,500 in prize money. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Bayern Munich are the kings of Europe once again bringing heartbreak to Paris Saint-Germain in this morning's Champions League final. The Parisians have spent millions on some of the most famous faces in football, but were ultimately undone by a player they let go for free six years ago. In today's Play of the Day, we take a look at Fijian international William Ekikau scoring the opening try for the Panthers in their 38-12 win over the Sharks in round 15 of the NRL over the weekend.
That's it from Sports Tonight and New Media. A study finds Facebook is not doing enough to stop the spread of misinformation. Details coming up. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In new media tonight, a group has claimed that Facebook is falling behind on checking on postings regarding the coronavirus, resulting in a major misinformation threat to public health. And Angie joins us now with the latest in weather. and welcome to the weather world hope your weekend was wonderful and amazing the sun was actually very helpful though a little petty rain intervened but it wasn't for long well here we are on the second last monday of august and i'm pretty sure the weather will change as well now moving on to the other centers the lovely west had brighter spells the picnic weather is fully on here whether on monday or sunday Eastwards from Pak Harbor to Suva, clouds covered with high chance of showers. And up north, the weather seems settled with a shower or two. Now at sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, high tide at 11.01 p.m. with low tide at 5.22 a.m. Sunrise at 6.19 for tomorrow, it will be generally good with just a few light scattered showers throughout. Tomorrow's temps, Ba will have a cool night while Lambasa will have a warm day at 32 degrees. And looking further on to Wednesday, very pleasant with warm temperatures and plenty of bright sunshine. The sea is still warm enough to swim in, so go for it. That's all the weather news from my end. Enjoy your nice evening. It's back to Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, are you happy with the government's decision to allow 50% capacity at places of worship? I think it's good the more people can go to the gathering, church gathering. This is good. We can now all go to church without any restrictions. Yeah. Now all families will be able to attend religious gatherings. For the past uh, couple of months, uh, there, 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 there have been limitations by the government uh, in terms of uh, worshiping and social gathering. I think it's a good idea. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, take a look at this self-described ghetto potter whose ceramic work speaks volumes about hip-hop, history and politics. The message that I send with my heart is that there's a place for us all, that we're relevant, that we matter. I'm Roberto Lugo. I'm a potter, spoken word poet and educator. It only takes a few moments to throw a pot. But it can take days to paint that pot. I use porcelain to make my ceramic objects. Because at some point, porcelain is considered more expensive than gold. And as a creative person who grew up in a poor neighborhood, it feels like I'm overcoming adversity with the artwork that I make. For me, the word ghetto is synonymous with resourceful. From growing up in a place that didn't have art classes, it's a miracle that I'm here. Recapping the main stories for tonight, PM sets the record straight. FDB nets green climate project funding and no more EIAs for surveyed areas. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. A poll question last week we had asked, should players found guilty of using drugs be banned from playing for life? 71% said yes. And this week we're asking, have you seen an ease in traffic congestion after road repairs along the Suvanal Sori corridor? 
visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, first one for the week, comes all the way from Yalava Village in Madawata. Nortawake shared this absolutely gorgeous picture of his pet goat. Too cute. And you can email us your pictures to fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I stay safe. Mother Mamba. Bula FM, number 2 NSR. Bula FM, number 2 NSR.